Just previous to this chapter, we find one place there where the Son of God spent so much time in prayer. And if Jesus had to spend much time in prayer to stay in fellowship with the Spirit that was in him, how much more do you and I have to spend in prayer? Much time in prayer. If you only knew what time in prayer meant, what sometimes when you're in prayer, God changes the, the complete destination of different things that's going to happen. Do you believe that? Might be something fixing to happen. And your prayer could change the whole situation. Well, you say, if God knows it's going to happen, what will my prayer do? You remember when he stood there looking out upon the harvest? He said, he was the Lord of the harvest. He said, the harvest is right, and labors are the few. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest, and he'll send labors into his harvest. In other words, pray to me that I will send labors into my harvest, which I'm just telling you is such a needy thing. But part of it lays in human beings. Do you believe that? The kingdom of God lays within the human beings. Now, Jesus said in one place, I am the vine, ye are the branches. The vine can bear fruit. The branches in the vine bear fruit. God cannot bear fruit on himself. It's got to take the church. Is that right? He's got to take you branches to bear fruit. And when you branches are yielded to the vine, then fruit comes forth. See what I mean? God wants your hands. He wants your eyes. He wants your tongue. He wants your lips. He wants your ears. He wants your hands and feet. So he can bring forth fruit through you. Now, Jesus put much time in prayer. One day there, he told his disciples, he said, now, cross over to the other side. He sent them away while he went up in the mountain to pray. While he was up there alone, really, a storm coming up, I believe, I don't know, but I believe if I'd been the disciples, I said, I know he told us to go over, but I, I believe I'll just wait till he comes and goes along. I like for him to be along in these cases, don't you? So we see him now going up into the mountain to pray. The disciples thrust down into the sea and picked up their oars, and their little ship sail went up, and away they started, oaring across to the other side, where Jesus was to meet them, on the other side. Then going in the absence of the Holy Spirit, our Christ then invisible form, on the road over trouble set in. And usually, if you start anywhere without Christ, trouble's on its road. Just as soon as the devil sees you out of fellowship with Christ, right then he'll set out on you as hard as he can. Just as soon as he sees you away from prayer, away from consecration, Satan will catch you right then if he possibly can. You know what? One night, when Billy Paul, you my boy, He's a little bitty fellow. We sleep in a little two-room cabin. And my wife had put this uh, floor wax on the linoleum on the floor. And it was real slick on the floor. And we had an old bucket out of the other room. The kitchen had two rooms. And we were sleeping in the front room. And the next room was the kitchen. And the bucket of water stood out there, the dipper. And so he woke up and he said, Daddy. And I said, what, little bitty fella? He said, I want a drink. And I said, well, oh, I was so tired of my walk through patrolling. And I said, honey, could you go get a drink there? It's just, just inside the door. He said, daddy, come go with me. And I said, oh, there's nothing to hurt you, honey. Just go inside the door. He said, daddy, I'm afraid to go unless you go with me. I thought, poor little fella. That's right. God, I'm afraid to go too unless you go with me. Father, I know it's all right. You are ordained ministers to go preach the gospel, but if you don't go with me, I'm afraid. So you come go with me. So I got up and fell around, got him by the hand. We started through the room, and just as we started through the room, 
she had one of those little uh, rugs laying in there, and the little fellow slipped and would have pitched right forward on his face if I didn't have a hold of his hand. And I held him up like that to keep him from smashing right down on his face. I thought, truly, God, that's right. You just hold my hand in these slippery dark places and things while I'm searching for the water of life. You just hold my hand as I move along. 